Hi everyone, welcome into the studio. Okay, did you watch the first video of this? This was the value one that I put up just the other day. It'll, I'll put them all in the same playlist for us, but the value, you need that because we need that language, that light and dark language as we proceed today through this painting so I can teach you. So if I say, okay, we need a value six, you know how light and dark a color I'm using, okay? So if you haven't watched that, Go watch that one. Watch that through. I paint a little rose, a little cloud, but I show you about the language of value and how value works in landscapes, okay? All right, so we need that. That's out of the way. Let's talk about, we're going to talk about how we're going to build this composition. We're going to talk about how I use my paints. What I'm going to teach you today is very slow. And I'll get some comments here that say, oh, you know, you talk too much, you do all that stuff, or whatever. If you're looking for that type of teacher, go find someone else. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to paint this painting in a nice, timely fashion, and you can paint right along with me. I'm going to start with all the basic building blocks of what artists use and how we use these techniques and properties and, and, and all of this to build beautiful paintings, okay? So I'm going to, this is going to be a longer video, and, but, and I'm going to slow down. And we're going to have a good time. And if you have questions, just write them into the comments there. And I will answer them for you. I answer the comments. Stuff in my videos, okay? So I will do that. So we'll have a good time together. My goal is to get you to be able to paint. Because painting is so much fun. And it can be so relaxing. And it can be frustrating if we don't explain everything to you. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take some time, okay? So grab yourself something... Nice to drink, and today, since it's 97 degrees outside here, <laughs> grab something cold, and let's sit down, and let's have a great afternoon painting together and learning together, okay? So, let's talk first about our paints. Now, there's all I'm an acrylic painter. I started out years ago. I've been painting 40 years. I started out the first 12 years of my career as an oil artist, and then I, the oils made me very sick. I couldn't get around them anymore, and I switched to acrylics. And I started actually in this industry as a paint chemist, so I know a lot about painting systems. I built oil painting systems and I built acrylic systems, and I love the acrylic system. Now the paints that I use here are what are called the Heritage Multimedia Paints. This is a newer generation paint. I built this paint, I designed this paint, uh, and, and did the formula of this paint about 12 years ago. And uh, it's made to do exactly what I'm going to be doing with it here in this uh, particular painting. Today I'm going to paint with it pure acrylic. In other videos I'll show you how to paint with it more like an oil. But um, we'll start out with acrylic. What first thing I do is I put it out on glass. This is a quarter inch thick tempered glass here. And I get it right at my local glass store which is right around the corner here from us at the City Fine Arts Center in downtown Sydney. Um, and this is a 14 by 18 sheet of quarter inch tempered glass. And then I have them sand the sides of it and it cost me $16 for it. And I've had, I've used this palette, this particular one that I got, I've used it for about three and a half, almost four years, maybe a little longer. Okay. Now there's other palettes you'll see me use. I like, I like Bien Fang, uh, multimedia palette. This is a nine by 12 here. Uh, it has to have a, a nice uh, kind of a coating on the, on the cover of the palette. You can see it here with the this, this slick color. And that keeps water from absorbing down. You don't want to use, you know, some of the oil palettes that you can use are very thin, almost like tissue paper. And But that just pulls the water right down through it and takes it out of the acrylics and actually causes your acrylics to dry faster. The other one I really like, which as a matter of fact, it's one sitting right underneath my glass here, is a Dick Blick multi-palette here. And uh, they're not too expensive, but for almost the price of a, of a palette, I get a sheet of glass that I've used for three and a half years or so, okay? So you can use either way. And what I do is I just squirt it out straight. There's some artists that will put their acrylics out onto wet paper towels and everything, you know, squirt them out there. And I do show that from time to time. But with this type of painting we're going to do today, that wet paper towel, the water will wick up into your paints and actually cause your paints to dry faster because you're adding more water to it. The more water you add to your paints, the faster they will dry. That's these paints because these paints are different than a lot of other acrylics. They dry slower than a lot of the other older generation acrylics and the acrylics that I built in the 80s and, and early 90s. These paints dry a little bit different, a different type of drying system, okay? So 
they're a little bit different. So we don't we want to be careful about when we add water to this paint, and we'll learn that. Okay, we just don't put them out onto anything wet, because water, water for these paints is what is called the solvent. It is also very fast drying and will actually cause your paints to dry faster. So don't add a bunch of water to these types of paints. Okay, we control that. All right. So I put them right out on onto glass, and the colors that I'm going to be using for a lot of paints, same ones that I've used a lot in, for this whole year on YouTube, is this is a Hansa yellow right here, which is a bright light yellow. This is a medium uh, value yellow. This is called um, Darulide yellow. This is yellow oxide. This one is naphthol red light. This is burnt sienna. This is pine green. This is thalo blue. My cool colors, and you'll hear me talk a lot about warms and cools today too, but we'll, we'll get more into that. We'll explain that, okay? If there's something you don't understand, don't get frustrated. Just write a comment. Just drop right down there at the bottom of the video and write a comment and ask me, and I will answer. I try to answer all my comments that I get on all my videos. If you look through there, you'll see me commenting on all of them. I sit down and I enjoy it because I'm a teacher and I like to teach. And I want to see you do good things. And you can't. So don't get frustrated. Let's talk about it. Okay? So here's the, my red violet. This is quinacridone violet. These are cool colors. And then this big old doll up here is my titanium white. Okay? And I put out quite a bit of it. Now, some of you may think, wow, he puts out a lot of paint. I do. I put out a lot of paint because I use a lot of paint. And the other thing is, you can save this paint. A lot of some people say, oh, you waste a lot of paint. No, I don't. I don't waste any of the paint. You know, it's uh, at the end of the day, sometimes I'll scrape up all my colors and I put them in a big container like this and they make, and it just always makes a nice tone color. And this becomes some of my background colors that you see me base into other paintings and stuff. And it always makes such a beautiful harmonious color because it's all your colors together. So it makes a beautiful background. The other thing I do is I use a lot of these little cups. You can buy these everywhere, restaurant supplies. I have links for this over on our studio page, danceandartstudio.com. Links for everything. So the value scale I showed you, everything is over there, but there's links over there. You can get different sizes of these little cups and they're really cheap. And what you do is you just, the you, just scrape up the paint at the end of the day, you know, into your little container. And this one is a, is a special color. I brought it out. This color I've had in here for four years that I'm using here in the studio. And the reason why I didn't use it out today is because in this particular color, I would scrape up my color at the end of, you know, when I'm, when I'm done with something, I put my color and I drop it into here and I put the lid back on. But before I get done with it, I add a little bit of extender to it. And so I add a little bit of extender into that and I mix it up. And what the extender does is it slow dries the acrylic. And over time, it starts to thicken it up and slow it dry. So this, this color that you see here right now, I could use that on a painting. It has about an eight hour drying time. And I'll explain more about that at, with acrylics as we go through some of the series of some of our painting. But when you're done with it, if you keep a bunch of these little, these little guys, you can sometimes take it out of the tube, sometimes take it out of your little cups. They'll stay in there very nice, especially before you end it up, before you close it up. Add a little bit of the extender medium. This is a medium. Extender medium is a medium that causes the paint to dry really slow. We're going to use some of it today. Okay, just a little bit of it today because I'm going to do mostly acrylic. But uh, those cups, you can save it and you're good. You're good to go, okay? So that's how I keep my colors out onto glass, put them out onto here. Those are my colors that I use. And then uh, over here to the side, I have my value scale that you can print off right on. Our, I told you about this in the, uh, the last or the very first video on value. Here is my photo of it put together here. We'll talk about that as I get going. And let's go back into our, uh, let's go back in over here to the board here. So again, this is my uh, 14 by 18, which I told you before my, in the last video and stuff too. This is my 14 by 18 board. I base coated it with titanium white here, okay? You could also use our, we have a medium called canvas prep medium, which is just like a, a, a gesso, but it's a modern version of it. It's more flexible and lasts longer than gesso. This is, a lot of times you don't want to use gesso 
I know a lot of artists use it, but you don't want to use a gesso. But you can use a canvas prep too. So, uh, but I give it a coat of titanium white, a couple coats over here, sanded it with 180 grit sandpaper so it's not smooth. It's not super smooth. It's got a little bit of a tooth. Now you can use a canvas. Somebody's going to say, can I use a canvas? Yeah, you can use a canvas. The, the thing is, you know, you have different types of weaves of canvas, portrait weaves, uh, you have regular leaves, you have student quality, which the weave is quite a bit bigger. That weave can get in the, in the, in the way sometimes of detail. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm going to be painting on today. I'm going to be painting a small little house in here. And so this small little house, if I want to be able to get little windows and all that kind of stuff in there, I might have to fight that weave on a canvas. And that's why I go to a board. Why well, don't fight it? Because I can just use the tip of a corner of a brush and drop it in there and I don't have any kind of weave. That's one reason why I go between canvas and boards, okay? As I look at my subject and how much detail I want to give it and whether or not I'm going to have to fight the weave. There are some times on some portraits and stuff like that that I, you know, I like that weave. Like, you know, uh, Jackie, that's Jackie's that's right back behind above my head, her her <laughs> that one is done as a normal on a portrait canvas so and i use some of that weave of the canvas to add some of the interest to the stroke especially into her hair and along her um little sailor suit and stuff so there are times you want to use a canvas there are times you want to use a board okay and we'll explain some of that a little bit more as we get going on but for today i have a board and the other thing great about a board like this is you can take a four by eight sheet you can go right down to your home store like i did and went to the home depot bought a big four by eight sheet of this quarter inch thick um it's called sandy ply it's re it's sanded really smooth it's beautiful stuff four by eight sheet of it four foot by eight foot of it for thirteen dollars is what it cost me now Today, which, you know, some of the stuff might be a little bit more, but I buy that and then I cut it up and have that. Uh, that if you don't, there's you can go on to Amazon or other places and you can buy 14 by 18 hardboards, MDFs, all of those will work. Just give it a couple coats of titanium white here, sand it with 180 grit sandpaper, and we're ready to go. Or use your canvas, but make sure you either fill up the weave or you've. Uh, you know, you get a nice finer weave so that we can get a little house in there. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about here. So we have that uh, done here. We have our reference photos. These are photos, all these photos that I have here that I'm showing here, I purchased from Adobe Stock. I have an account with Adobe Stock. I love Adobe Stock photos. I'm looking for something, and if it's too hot to go outside to do any plain air painting and stuff, I come back to Adobe Stock to buy the photo. And in this particular one, I put it together. I put it together, I, I took one photo from Adobe Stock, and using Photoshop, I added a mountain from another pit of photo that I, I uh, purchased here, okay? Now, what that mountain, as you can see in that, in that uh, particular photo, or actually we can look at it right down here, that mountain is pretty dark in here and you know for this little house so this is actually right where i joined them together that you can see here so we're gonna have to change some stuff here but i want to be able to give you something to kind of reference and how we're going to do it okay and uh you know i i'm going to have to change this for the atmospherics some of the things that i talked to you about in that first video so if you haven't again if you haven't watched that first video you need to watch that first video so we because this is stuff we're going to build on each one of these things i'm going to paint with you in this playlist in this series are going to build on each other okay so you need to make sure you watch some of those so you don't get confused okay so what i have here this is another one that i did with adobe stock it's wonderful uh, and this is an actual real photo of atmospheric perspective in what happens to mountains and stuff as they're going back. So this is a this is a real photo. And over here, this one is is the same way. You can see that here, at where the color and the color diminishes and everything in into the mountains here. Let's just look at that. Everything into the mountains back here. See, starts to become blue. That's that that's that atmospheric. The mountains, as they go back, become more like the sky. So the mountains here, the darkest colors that you see in here are actually coming into the front of the, of the composition and getting lighter as they go back. That's the atmosphere. And in that first video and stuff, I'm, and in my color theory class, I explained to you because I studied so much of, of uh, physics and stuff in there and light and bending the light and natural light. Basically, you're looking through water vapor as you're looking through 
you know, the atmosphere. And as you get further back, you're looking further through more of that vapor. And depending upon, you know, how much vapor's in the air, it's got, how much it's going to lighten up the, those colors. But the colors of the mountains, in atmospheric perspective, to make distance, as you go back, it's going to be set by the sky. Whatever value you do the sky is going to set that mountain, okay? So here, when I purchase this photo of this mountain, because I want to paint this mountain, well, this mountain is up in the mid-range. Well, let's take a look, okay? How do you tell? Well, see a nice scale like this. You can see the dark. Where's the dark values of that mountain? It's right up here towards the front by my thumb, right? It's not back here. Those dark values. See, a back mountain will have values like that, okay? And then the, uh, as it comes forward, it'll get a few more darker values. It'll get, maintain its lights, but it'll get a few more darker values into it here. That's the atmosphere. That's how it works. So our at mountain actually fits in right here, about the second one. You know, might even go all the way to a little bit of that one, but it's right there. But I want to push this mountain further back. A bit into the painting. So I might paint it here with some of these colors right in through here. Okay, so how do you do that? We set our sky here. You see the sky is up here along the light. Up here is right about a value nine or so, right up there. It's not a pure white, but so is this mountain here. So if you look at this color right here where it's that lightest and stuff, it's up here about a nine. Now as your eye gets more trained, you'll say, no, Dave, that's about a 9.5. Yeah, it's true. You're going to, as your eye gets more trained, you'll, and you start to see value better and better, and it will come. At first, it doesn't come. If you're a beginner with it, it takes time for, to train your eye to see it, okay? But you can see it. It takes time. But you'll say, oh, it's about a 9.5. Yeah, it, it, it is, okay? It's right between a 9 and a 10, and you can see, you as you start to understand, you can make a color right between those two values, here, okay. Actually, let's flip this over and do this side of the scale here. So you can see that right there. See, see, look at the nine. There's the nine into the sky right there. So that's pretty close into what it is. It's not a 10, okay. The 10's saved up here closer to the snow. So it right up here along the ridge line is going from a nine and it's going right up here up into the top of this photo here. The mountain is getting up there about about a six or so, right in there, six, five, six, right in there. So if I set that as my sky here, which will work right back up over here, then I can set my mountain. So no matter what, what you're doing, that, that back part of that mountain, right along in through there, is going to be somewhere right at the start, somewhere as a, as a nine, eight, so ten to an eight. Most paintings, I start them out right between an eight and a nine. That's where I like to start them. And then I'll take that top of the sky that we're going to put there. I'll take that top of that sky up to a five or a six, get a nice deeper blue. That helps set that. And then, now, how much dark you show on the mountain pushes the mountain further back or brings the mountain forward. So I would look on this, the value scale of this, and you'd say, wow, that mountain, I mean, there's some of it up there that's like a two right in there. But that's too dark for this right up here. If I look, if I say I want to put it right there, that mountain's going to be maybe a five, maybe a six, five or a six. So I set the position how far that mountain's going to go back by how light and how dark I show up my darks okay and so how i show up my darks we'll talk about that so in this particular instance here this mountain is a lot darker than i want to paint because i want to i want to push the mountain a little bit further back in this particular painting so when i when i look at a painting and one of the first things i to judge is how much distance do i want to make into that painting okay and i'll show you some things as we get going so that's one of the things that i do and how do i do that value okay the value of the sky versus the darks that are going to show up in the mountain the darker the colors in the mountain that i make the, the closer i bring it to me the lighter the colors in the mountain that i make the more i push it away from me okay and so you can see lighter color here and go into a slightly darker but that's this is darker that's darker that's darker the darker colors come forward Okay, even it, you can even see that here in this other photo here. 
all these dark, and this one shows the intensities also, the brightness of the color. So these mountains aren't blue. These mountains are these colors here, but they appear blue because of atmospherics here. You can kind of see kind of the, the other tones or the brownish kind of tones here, but that one's more blue because it's further back, see? And they're more atmospheric, okay? So the atmosphere is not only going to affect value, it's going to affect some of the tones. We'll learn that, okay? We will learn that, all right? All right. So let's just decide right now first. Let's sketch out. I want to do this, this painting together. I want to put this little house in there. I'm going to probably make the house a little bigger than what I what I did there. As a matter of fact, I printed off another one over here where I made it just a little bigger, and I'll probably make it a little bigger yet, okay? But let's go in here, and what I'm going to do, so I have a 14 by 18 canvas, and one of the first things I'm going to do, I'm just going to sketch. I'm going to use all kinds of brushes here today, show you some different things, but I like to sketch with an old uh, bristle filbert, okay? This is a, a, a number one bristle filbert from our line. And I'm going to take a little bit of blue and a little bit of burnt sienna here. And just a touch of the white here. It makes me a nice gray color here. I'll just add water. I have a little container of water here. I'm going to loosen it all up. And I'm going to just step back on my brush and I'm going to do a little sketching here about where I'm going to put the mountain. Now the, the important part here is you know, there's a lot of, you know, when you're learning to do some of these things, there's a lot of rules, and there's a lot of rules that artists create, and some of them fit their techniques and others, and so on and so forth. But you just don't want to put that subject right in the very center. That's basically the rule here. So what I like to do is I like to, to uh, come up here, and I'll find about halfway, you know. So if this is a line, just a, just a casual little line here, about halfway, and sometimes, this is one of the, you'll see me use this on many landscapes too. Yeah, I could just go right over to the Home Depot and buy one of their, their cheap little rulers. And I cut off the end of it, made myself my own little T-square. So if I want to get something exactly, you know, exactly flat and straight right across there, I draw that line and it works every time. So that's about, that's about, uh, you know, halfway. And artists will use their long handles. Yeah, I'm just running just a tiny touch, maybe a quarter of an inch low, but that's right about halfway. So I don't want to put that house right there, right in the halfway, right in the very center of my painting. That won't look so so uh, great because that just, you know, we like to send it in either one of the quadrants. What a lot of artists will do is we'll draw it out into quadrants and we'll say, okay, I'm going to push that house maybe down into this quadrant right down in here, somewhere down here. That would be a, a good thing to do. You don't want it right exactly in the center. You want to take it off just a bit. That makes sense, okay? So we'll we'll do that. We'll kind of plan for that. So that means and then I have to decide here about how much sky I want to get, get up here. Now, I do like to have a lot of sky in a painting because sky is just a wonderful background, uh, you know, for the painting. So I'm going to decide that. And so I'm going to leave maybe a, quite a bit of a sky, and I'm going to start this mountain, the point of that mountain that you see right up here. As um, a matter of fact, I need to slide this right over here for a second. Maybe you can slide that right underneath there. And so I'm going to put the point of that mountain right there. Maybe I'm going to put it right up here in this upper quadrant right here and leave some sky. Leave about, so I'll divide this quadrant up right here, and maybe let's let's look. We don't know for sure. We leave ourselves some stuff. Let's put that double point of that mountain right there. And we can change some things here. Now, this mountain comes down at a nice triangle. And those of you who've watched some of my other videos, I, I like to draw on triangles. I work in triangles. Let's put another little point out just past that line there and just let that come across there like that. So that's kind of where that mountain is gonna go. And we're not gonna copy the mountain exactly because we're gonna change a lot of things about it. But it gives us some ideas about where we're gonna go. So maybe the end of this mountain comes down here about kind of almost where it is here in my, my finger here, about halfway, somewhere around there, okay? Now, I'm gonna put in another tree line. So I have this other one that drops down and there's just an arching kind of a tree line. That's gonna put my house right down here, which is not too bad. Maybe we'll raise that just a bit. Somewhere right in here, is going to be this tree line from the other photo, 
Okay. Now we'll do all of this other fun stuff in here in just a minute. But somewhere right start maybe here or a little bit below and, and just kind of draw an angle down there like that. And that gives us our room for our house here. And then as we come down here, we'll have kind of an arched area here for the uh, the nice plane of the uh, the field there. And so that's going to put our house somewhere into there. And that'll that'll probably work. Give us some nice sky area up there. We'll have this area in here that we can develop other trees and do other things. And that's just a basic starting sketch. Now, I usually don't do a tremendous amount of detail when I'm starting a sketch right away because that's a lot of lines. It gets confused. And then what can start to happen to you as an artist is you can start to stiffen up because you don't want to cover up that line. You don't want to cover up your pattern, your drawing, okay? And so there's a fear to that. So I put on just the basic lines. We'll block in some of the basic areas to it, and that will allow us to change it pretty easy. Just a moment. Forgot to turn off my phone. <laughs> we'll do that. So we'll put in that pretty easy. And uh, then we'll come back in and we'll slowly build and add and we can modify really easy. So we're going to start by just kind of blocking in some main areas, okay? And then if we need to change, it's really easy to change. Then we'll start to add the detail. Does that make sense? Okay. So I have that. Just some simple lines. Simple lines. House is going to be somewhere right around in here. That, that will probably work for us. And that is right about into that lower quadrant and stuff of where that other one is. Okay. So with that in mind now, let's talk about what we want to do with this setup. Now there's all kinds of ways to do the setup. And one of them that I wanted to uh, share with you uh, today was a couple of artists. One who just passed away this year, which was a huge loss to our art community, was Richard Smith. Richard Smith, I've, I've followed him and he's, you know, for years and years and years. He's just, a, he was a modern day master. And this is one of his with the house. And he had this, this way of what we call drawing in. In other words, you know, when you look at a uh, landscape, and the, like the ones that I showed you here with the mountains, okay? You look at this one with the mountains. The dark colors are coming forward, okay? What Schmidt did was he drew the, the, the viewer into the painting by applying those dark colors here into the mid-ground area of the painting. So you look past all of the foreground and your eye comes right in. It's called drawing in to the painting. Now, I've studied, you know, all the masters for all the years, hundreds of years, and I love this one. I, I love this one. This is Hans Morris. Uh, he is um, a painter born in 1901. He died in 1942. But uh, he's painting the Matterhorn, and he does that same thing. He brings in the light colors here, draws in super dark areas right into his mid-area of his painting here, and and that causes the, the viewer to draw into the painting, Okay. So there's a couple ways to approach the paintings of landscapes. One is you can put all the dark colors in the front, which you see me do a lot in many of my paintings. And then the other is to draw in, which means the, the darker value colors are going to go into the center part of the painting here. That's called drawing in. And we're going to draw, and I, that's what I liked about this one here, is... When I looked at that particular photo, I see the dark colors, the dark color bands right in through here. It draws you into the house, which means I'm going to lighten up even a little bit here and compress some of those values and put my darker values right down through there. Does that make sense? And I'm going to draw the viewer into the house. And then I'm going to lighten up the front. I'm going to lighten up the mountain. That will push the mountain back. And that will, that lighter color, because it doesn't contrast the sky, is going to cause the front of the painting to be softer and draw in, okay? We'll paint other ones later where we drop values back, but we'll start with that. So that's a general plan. Let's start washing some color, okay? So what I want to do here, and there's all different kinds of ways to do it. You see artists that come in there, and I do it sometimes too, 
with a big brush and we put our sky in. But if you look at some of the masters, like Hans Morris, here, if you look up real close, you'll see his sky is a whole bunch of small vertical strokes that gives more what we call atmosphere to the sky, more color movement. And you can see it's darker blue up here and more of the lighter gray colors and stuff up here. And why does he gray so much here? So his white snow on the Matterhorn jumps off at you and he uses a lot of textures and stuff. That's the fun thing about art. There's thousands of things you can do. There's not just one way. There's thousands of things you do. I've spent my whole life studying all different kinds of techniques from all different kinds of artists. And I put them up here in my studio and I mix them all up and I put them out and kick out a painting. And it's a lot of fun. And there's some you're going to forget and you're going to go, oh yeah, I remember I used to do that. It's just, it's there's just so much. And that so much, if you're brand new, that so much can be so overwhelming and so confusing. And, uh, you know, I, I feel for you. But it, it can be learned, and it can be absorbed, and you can find your own style, and it can be fun. Don't let frustration get to you, okay? We'll get you out of it. Don't let frustration get to you. Okay, so we're going to learn this technique, value painting and drawing in. That's the two things that we want to really do today with this painting. Value paint it and draw it in. And then we'll put those things up here in our studio and we'll remember those. And then, you know, you may go grab another photo and say, okay, I want to draw it in. What well, means I need to change some of this color stuff in here? Let's look at it. So to draw in, first let's set our background. And in all landscapes, your background is really the sky or the majority of the painting. And here, the sky is going to occupy, occupy quite a bit. Now, this is one of the few areas I'm going to use a little bit of extender first. This is extender. This is that medium I showed you. This is going to slow down the painting, the drawing of the painting here. Okay, so I'm going to take my bigger brush. This is a one-inch fusion flat brush that I like to paint with. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to loosen it up with some of my extender, which is going to make the color thinner. When this color is thinner, it's going to wash on really easy, apply really, really easy. And it is not going to have too much texture, so it, which I'll explain more later, but we want a, it more of a wash. Now the tiniest, tiniest bit of phthalo blue goes into this. You look at how dark that immediately makes that. Let's find the uh, value of that. Let's find where we are with that. So we put that on there. We're right about an eight. Now, like I said to you before, acrylics dry a little darker. But I can. I have this all mixed up here. I can start that. So I'm gonna start right up about up to here, here, and I'm gonna do some vertical strokes and some horizontal strokes so I get some atmosphere. I'm gonna start right up into the mid part, right up here with an eight or so here like that. Now I like also to add a little bit of violet. So I'm going to, and I'm going to darken it up there. So I'm going to take a little bit more blue, maybe a touch of violet here and mix that up because I love the violet colors here, right in here. Now what's our rule? How dark can we go up there to the sky? Well up there it's a five to a six. So as we make this color we want to make sure that we get it somewhere, that's gonna be about a six when it's done there. So let's just put a bit of that in here. And I'll do some verticals and some horizontals. Model this up so I get some interest and stuff into my painting here, see? Just like that, and push that around like that. Okay, step way back on your brush. We use long handle brushes because that keeps the tip of the brush, A, softer, and then it also doesn't allow you to make as much of a, a precise stroke. So you'll get a lot cleaner movement to the, I mean, a lot more movement and interest to the painting if you do that. Now, so I have some of this. Now I can lighten the pressure on my brush and just drag it through a little bit, both horizontally and vertically. So I create what we call this atmosphere, this movement of it. You just don't want big, well, let me just show you here. If I go over here and I do this, I make big vertical strokes, your eye moves vertical, I mean, your big horizontal strokes, your eye moves horizontal. We don't want that. We want more of a vertical because our painting is more vertical. So we want to break it up a little bit here, move some of that through. Now, let's jump over here to the other side. Let's lighten this up. How light do we go? Eight or nine, maybe a nine, okay, right to a nine. Let's push some of that in there. 
yeah, it's a little different because I have that violet. You can see some difference in there. And that's going to add all kinds of wonderful interest to your, to your sky, okay? Now, remember what Hans is doing. He's graying it, and you can, we can do that later on, too. We can add some of the colors of our mountain right into the sky and gray it. That's what an artist does. It's called harmony, and we're going to do a lot of that, okay? It's called harmony. You're going to hear that forever. Put that in the back of your mind here. You're going to hear me say that for years. More harmonious to your paintings. So let's put a little bit of that through. Now, and come right up over this area here. We'll drop just a bit of that up and through. So now I get, I get some nice uh, movement there in the sky. As I start to go up, I lighten the pressure of my brush because I don't want to lighten that up too much up there. But I start to get some movement into it. And you can take a little bit more white and just it, just by touching it like right in through here or like that and moving that around, you can create the, the, like, the feeling of even clouds and everything into that, okay? But the big thing is you want this movement. See this movement in through there? You just don't want a solid color sky. You want some verticals because we're a vertical painting. This is a vertical painting. We want some verticals. We want a few horizontals, a few marks to it. If you want more contrast in it, you can add just a touch more. Where's your contrast going to come from? Where's your interest going to come from? Light colors or dark colors? Dark colors, right? You're a landscape painter. You're going to come from the dark. So I can add a little bit more dark right up here and drag some of that down a bit into my sky so I can look at that if I... Uh, you know, want to create it. If I want more depth to that sky, I go lighter. Does that make sense? So we'll just move that around just a bit like that. Create some of that modeled interest up there into the sky. And that creates mist and all kinds of stuff. Now, here's our mountain. To create the atmosphere of the mountain, we want that mountain to go back, right? And so a good technique when you're drawing in or making something recede is to take the sky right into that area. So let's thin this color out right up here our light color. Let's thin it out with a little more extender and let's just drop it right down into our mountain a bit here just like that. Okay and sometimes you'll see me just wipe that. Okay just wipe that like that and so you can still see the mountain. See how you can just see the mountain? But that little bit of sky color that's in there is going to mix with everything else I do. Or if I use a transparent technique, because we're acrylic, we use a wash, we use, there's a lot of different ways to do it. But as those, the big thing is, this color becomes like this color, it goes back. Does that make sense? Just like I showed you into the, into the, uh, the stuff. Or even, you know, even if you look, Look at, at, at Schmidt here. I mean, he was the, the master of it. Look at, look at his strokes that he has here in this painting. He has both verticals and horizontals. Horizontal marks, vertical marks there. But look at his roof here, the difference in the roof between the two houses. This one is more like the sky. Look at the difference of the trees here to the trees that are back here. These trees are more like the sky. That's how an artist establishes the depth. We make it like the sky. And what is happening to its value? Here's the darks coming forward. Here's the lights going back. So if I take some of my light sky into my mountain, that's going to cause my mountain to go back. Does that make sense? And that's the basic rule. As I take this area away from the sky, that's going to cause it to uh, come forward. Okay. And that's one of the things I like to do. So, you know, how far do you take the sky down? Oh, you don't need to take it down too far. But if this is the top of the mountain, maybe I'll go into here. I might even drop some down here. What I like to do as a harmony painter, I'm a harmony painter. I love harmonies of colors. Is I like to just kind of drag a little bit of this down and through into everything right down into here to the painting. A little bit. Because now you're not cutting the painting in half. See how your eye, your eye still picks up these colors, and it will. Now, most of that will disappear, and as we paint in the other colors, but we'll, and we should, towards the end of the painting, come back and add a little bit of those. If you watch some of my last landscapes onto the channel, you'll see, 
at the very end of it, I said, okay, this is a nice landscape, but we can add more harmony. We could make a better painting, a better presentation of this landscape by taking the sky down into the foreground of the painting a little bit. Okay, that's another thing I want you to put up here. You'll hear me say it again and again, okay? But uh, it's another thing I want to say in there. So we want to watch our values and we want to draw in. Now, how do I draw you into here? How do I do that? Do I do that with the light color? Do I put that light color in there? Does that draw you in right in there to the painting? Right into that? There's, look at that beautiful house. Is that drawing you right into that house there? No. That's not, that's not really doing it yet here. Okay, what's going to draw you in? Well, let's go find a dark. Some nice dark. Some nice, and I generally, you can do warm or cool. These are two warm colors, burnt sienna and pine green. I like those. Those are mid-tone brownish greens that are going to appear a lot in the painting. Okay, and you can see how dark. Let's see, let's, let's go over here to our value scale side, and I'm going to be right down in here. Two or three. So I'm up here to down here. That's quite a bit of contrast. If I put any kind of mark, now don't overmix, just model these together. I don't want you to overmix anything to one color in anything we paint today. We want to make it just model it like that on our brush. So if I put that anywhere in here, look at where your eye goes in this painting, right in there. Your eye goes zoom, so it's bypassing this, and it's going right up into there. And if I put, so let's say we're going to have that line of trees or something like that in there. So if I'm going to put some trees right in here, okay, here like that, right across like that, what that's going to do is draw you into the painting, and then the mountain's going to recede. Do you see that? Okay. Now, we want to be... A, kind of artistic and a little bit careful about this, how we do this. So what we generally do, or what a lot of, of what are called impressionist artists, and I'm one of them, I like to do this, is I'll take a paper towel or a bigger brush and I'll touch that and then I'm going to work my paper towel like this to, to add those darts but to break them up and add some interest like this along that area there. And let's break that up. Just pull down, get some verticals. Sometimes a horizontal, but get some verticals in here. Look at how the greens and the browns are coming out different. And basically what that's doing, see the greens and the browns, it's carrying some of those colors, some of those tones that we're going to use in our painting. Now use a paper towel because it's not perfect. But a lot of artists will go ahead and use, the, the use a, a brush. And you can do that too. What makes that determination? Your technique, your look that you want. So I want some nice darks right in there, right alongside where that house is going to go. As I come out of that house, that area of the house, let's put a little warmer burnt sienna right in there. I love burnt sienna. Let's come out of that and then let's wipe it, turn the edge of the paper towel here so we can soften it out. Because what you're doing is you're taking the darkest value here and then it's getting lighter because it's becoming more transparent. Now you can add water or a little water to that you know, to make some softer colors, we can add some water to that or a little extender. Extender will make it dry slower. Uh, the big thing is you're transparenting it out to help you make some of these other tones here to help round up where some of those other colors are going to go here, right up there like that. And so you can just put some of that softness in of what's going to happen in that particular area there. And I place it, so when you look at that, now that camera, this is the other thing that those of you are new to painting. I'm filming here with three cameras. So I have my palette camera, I have my camera I'm talking to you right now, which also gives me a, what's called a distant shot of my painting. And then I have the close-up camera, which I'll be varying a little bit, shows you a little bit more of, of what the painting is looking like. But it is very important as an artist and remember this, it's very important to get up and get back and look at it. Stand back. I like to paint my paintings for five to eight feet, usually around six. That camera is set back eight feet. So what you're seeing me and we're talking here is you're looking. And when you look at that right there and I have a monitor I'm looking at, you'll see me look at it. And you'll see me look at that monitor and that monitor showing what the cameras are doing. But it's what's most important, guys, 
is I'm seeing what that painting is looking like at eight feet. So I know that when we put it into the gallery out there, what it's going to look like when it's going to hang and someone's pulling it in. I mean, someone's looking at it hanging on the wall. I want them to draw in. So I'm looking at the drawing in. Does that make sense? Okay. So <clears throat> I'm looking at, am I grabbing enough dark, basically? And maybe I want to cool this just a touch more. And somewhere in there with a little bit of blue, somewhere in there add just a mark or two around where that house is going to go of some darker tones here. I'm not making trees yet. I'm just, I'm just mixing it up and marking and adding some of those tones in there that I know where that little house is going to sit and I'm creating some of that interest. Does that make sense? And we're going to vary all of this and everything, but you can start to see, step back and go, okay, yeah, my eye's drawn into there. Okay, my eye, my eye is drawn into that area there, and you can do that, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, well, I'm going to rinse that color out of the brush with some water here, and I'm going to come back up over here, and I do love this golden color right up in through here, and, but the thing is, it's very intense, and this is a very intense paint, so I'm going to drop some of that intensity down. Now, one color you can add in the line, which is a medium beige, which is a wonderful color to add if you're a landscape painter because it's a nice neutral. It's a nice neutral color that we can use to uh, help us neutralize some of our other colors because it's a neutral brown. We can use it in the mountains. We can use it into the foreground. I'll use it with some yellow oxide here and I'll just thin this down with some water and let's just put a, a foreground stroke right in here like this of some movement now we want to do some verticals and some horizontals here and we want to just put some of that color in here we'll do more now there's a nice strong horizontal right across here and i might add that that's the actual field this is the house sitting above the actual farming field there it's a nice horizontal and uh, we might do that matter of fact we might change that tone maybe a tiny bit of burnt sienna in it and just drop that across. But we'll keep everything else soft. So you could use water or extender. Let's even just grab some of this real thin, add some of that medium beige, keep the color lighter, softer, right around the value seven, six, seven, somewhere around in there. Here, let's add just a bit of this. We'll just add some movements here, brush movements, thin, very thin. And we can add more as we as we develop our painting. So when you look at somebody like Richard Smith or something like that doing that here, see he's going to add some of this interest, but he's going to get his contrast in through here with his darks. He needs that contrast and you can see those siennas, those burnt siennas and those greens and stuff. It's beautiful. He was a, a true, true master of bringing this all together. Okay, All right, so I have some of those colors there. Now, these are some of my foreground colors, some of my sky colors. Those all make beautiful mountain colors, okay? Now, some of this might start to dry up. This doesn't because it's got that extender in there. But a good thing to start up some of your values is just start taking some of this stuff all together here, and they make the beautiful grays that we can start some of our mountains. Now, sometimes I start the mountains out more blue, sometimes other colors, but they, you know, you, there's all different kinds of ways, but burnt sienna and blue here make beautiful mountains, basically. You can just set that all up. Now, for our mountains, we have to decide the value of our mountains, how much blue we're going to show in it and so on and so forth. But we said here, when we were going to do the, um, the differences and stuff here in the mountains, we want our mountain here to come maybe maybe right up in through here maybe uh, maybe we might do a little bit of this color but i do like this in here so that right in there you just hold your value scale up to there and it's going to tell you i want to take my mountain uh, no darker than a five okay no darker than a mid-tone five okay right up in there so basically i'm going to take my mountain now i can add the blue part of it here and blue and a little red this naphtha red light these are complements this will gray it really fast 
here, okay? But we can keep it slightly on the blue side if we want. But you see all the grays, all this together makes just beautiful mountains. Now, that's going to be too dark. See, that's going to be down there three to four. So we want to take this up a little lighter here, and we want to head towards our five, a little lighter yet. And you sit there and you look at it and you go, wow, that's really light to the mountain. Yeah, that's, see, that's right down there still as a kind of a four. But you got to remember, it's going to dry a little darker. So let's get this up. Make sure that we're pretty high here. Yeah, we're getting close there. And let's start with our darks, okay? So what I want to do is I want to look at the mountain plain here. Okay, what is the mountain? And let's bring that in a little closer right there for right now, okay? So you can see that. What is the mountain here? And I want to find the angles and the little points of the mountains. And I want to start with the shadows. So first off, working from left to right, we have a angled of a shadow here. Now see how much darker that looks up there? You know, and that's what we have to... We have to, we have to look, constantly use some of your references and stuff. See, it's a little darker than what you have here. This is what we call simultaneous contrast. It looks darker here because of all the white that's around it. We're just going to lighten that up just a touch here. And we're going to pull some angled strokes here. We want to kind of put in, I like that little smaller peak there. So I'm just going to kind of touch it and find the angle of the mountain there just a bit there like that okay now this is a big brush and the question is do you go big brush or small brush here's another little thing for us to kind of remember here too i'm a big follower of john singer Sargent, who was a 19th century a la prima painter on um, landscape and portrait painter and he always says use as big a brush as possible in all your areas so that because that puts on larger strokes of color passages larger passages well, uh, area of color we call a passage of color, okay? If you get in there with a small brush, you put a lot of movement, and all that movement's going to generate interest. If I'm back here, I don't want to, I want to paint my mountain, but I don't want to paint it with a tremendous amount of interest. So you want to use as large a brush as possible. This one is probably a little too big. Probably a three-quarter inch would be better. We'll go to that. But I'm going to try to just use the corners and the edges of this brush, which is going to give a lot more interest to the... Uh, to the mountain if I use the edges like this. You know, when I started out, I did like Bill Alexander and Bob Ross, all that stuff, and used the palette knife and everything. And then I started painting with more, just using edges and stuff of the brush here. And we'll push this out here. And sometimes I'll use my finger to blur an edge or create a different color, color mat passage there. Change the tone a little bit, add a little sky, change it just a bit here. And we're going to create a bit of a second one there. And we'll just kind of drag this down. Maybe I'll raise this up just a bit over here. Push and angle the brush like that. And get some of that movement through. Now, light as we're deciding here. So that's going to be basically the outline of my mountain there. Light is coming here in this particular painting. Light is coming... Um, here from the right side so you can tell you can see the shadow here off to this side from the tree you can see the shadow of the mountain coming down this side light side here so these strokes these angles this way are going to be light these strokes these angles this way are going to be shadow okay so what i start to do is i can darken this up just just half a value here and I can add a, a few planes in like this. I call them planes, shadow planes, in like that. That is just going to help us identify shadow, shadow and light, okay? And that's how we're going to break it up first, shadow and light. But look how that tone, and it would be even prettier if I got a little bit more sienna in there, but it's uh, that I can do. But look at that tone fitting some of this tone. Now, here's the thing. Okay, this is going to be, this is another way that you differentiate yourself as an artist as opposed to a, what I call a painter. And for many, many years, I'm not saying anything bad about that at all, guys. Not at all. Okay, many, many years I was a painter. And I'd sell my paintings, you know, a couple hundred dollars. And then when my paintings started selling into the thousands is because I became an artist. 
And what the artist will do is we'll, we express a tone, we express a color. And from now on, you're going to hear me say, this is a tone. We express a tone and then we carry a tone. Does that make sense? Okay. So I want you to remember that. You expressing the tone and then you're going to carry the tone a bit. You're going to, that tone is going to be allowed to show up other, other positions, other points of the painting. And so you can see it expressed and then accented basically through the painting. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's what we want to do. We want to express it and then we want to accent it. Okay. So I have that down. Now, before I get too involved here, I'm going to go down and I, I like this smaller little lighter mountain here. Before I even put any snow or anything, I like this one right in here like that. So I'm going to lighten this up. And since it is going to be a left stroke, it's going to be a little bit warmer. I'm going to use some medium beige. It's a pretty color. We'll just warm this up. This is, gives us a starting point. As a matter of fact, that's pretty darn close to what that other little bit of that mountain will be right in there. Let's just put a bit of that in at a small angle like that. You know, add a few little brush movements in there. Okay, add a few little brush movements. But that main right there, that sets that slope. See the slope of that angle? That's gonna be right there, that sets it. We can express the tone. We can carry that tone a little bit into some of these other areas of the mountain here. Let's just drop a bit of that around, and uh, maybe a bit of that shows up back here on the left side of one that's going to climb right up there like that. I blur the edge sometimes there, so it causes that blurry edge. Just take your finger and go, Phew! that causes it to recede further back here into the, into the background. Gets rid of all of those little edges and causes it to recede back there, okay? All right, so I like that particular tone in there. Change it up, add a little sky, a little bit more going on. We'll add a few little marks of that color in here, okay? Just to get some of that going. Let's get rid of that line there for a second, okay? All right, so now into some of these other areas here. Let's go put just the first little look at light. First little look at light snow. The light side of the snow that you're going to put in here, you're going to want to put in warm. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to go to a bit of a smaller brush here. Let's go down to my half inch here. Half inch is a good size to paint this uh, thing. We're going to want warm and cool, and it's very easy. These are warm, these are cool. So if I'm on the warm side of the snow, I'm going to add just a touch of that yellow oxide here. It's going to warm that. And let's just capture a little bit of that warmth of that mountain here. Touch, push, touch and push a bit of that. There's a bit of it dribbling down that little valley there. We can just indicate that. Maybe a little bit right there, okay? Just a bit. Now it's not as light. It's not as light. I don't need to be yet. I'm painting it first and just kind of putting some color in first. And then I'll go back with the light. So some of my dirty mountain, my white, a little bit of yellow to warm it up, okay? And let's just come in here. There's another little bit of it right in there I like. I like some of that right in there. I'm just gonna add a bit of that right in there like that. And you just slowly build through. You know, there, when I was a, in a lot of decorative painting, we, we created pathways of color. What we created was, you know, you base coat with a medium, a shadow, and a highlight. When you get into the arts, and especially into the Dollar Prima, you paint what it needs. You flip back and forth between lights, darks, warms, cools. You paint what the mountain needs as you build it. You paint what the tree needs as you build it. So, you know, it doesn't make a difference if a dark sits on top of a light. But in the decorative painting book, boy, once you put the dark in, you don't go back to, and once you put that light on, you don't go back and put that dark in. The light has to sit on top of the dark. That's what I used to believe for many years. And now, of course, we do things a little different. Now, okay, so that's the warm. Let's go over and cool it. Let's add a bit of the violet, maybe a touch of the blue. Let's come right over here and cool this. And I'm going to kill that, just that blue, just a bit of the, of the, 
burnt sienna. Now, so that's a good cool. And you can see the, you can look like right up in through here, see that really blue, bluish kind of cool color. It's kind of violet or blue here. Okay, let me just uh, slide this over just a touch more. Okay, it's kind of a violet or bluish color. You could have it a touch more blue if you want. We're going to vary this quite a bit. Value-wise, I want it darker. I want to get down here. That's a good five. So my snow up here is up about an eight, and I'm putting the shadow of the snow in about a five. So let's come in here. So this mountain is kicking this shadow right here of this snow on that side right there. So that's the shadow of the snow there that you can see. And of course we can do more and vary it and all that kind of stuff. There'll be a little bit of that snow shadow on this shadow side of the mountain right over here. We'll just tap a bit of that into there. You can see that, okay? And you know, where, I mean, do you want to have some more? See, these marks that are right down through here are actually into shadow. So that would be shadowing snow. We can add more darks and stuff, but that's shadowing snow. You can, don't try to copy it, just kind of emulate it a little bit. Some of the, get some of those tones around there. Let's get a longer one to this side so we can put a nice sloping side to that side of that mountain there. So we'll get a bit more of that, of that cooler snow in there. Now, do we want any more of that peering anywhere else? If you're really pushing the mountain back, you might have a bit of it showing up into the shadows of the valleys where mountains come back together, where the sun doesn't hit quite a bit. You would get snow down into little valley areas here. So sometimes I'll add some down into there as well. All right. Now let's go back up and express. Let's just wipe our brush. Let's come back and express some more warm. Let's take our warm and some more light, not pure 10, maybe up towards our nine. I want you to hold your brush. Now we're gonna step back and hold our brush kind of flat like this. And we're just gonna kind of drag it, set the, almost where the ferrule touches the end and drag that down. And you'll get a more of a modeled of your lights. Let's go a little bit more. And we notice how the paint's getting thicker. I want the paint to be thicker as I start to set a few of these lights into here. Just tap a bit, touch, drag, and you can start to see some of the, the planes and the lights and stuff coming out here. Now we can break little edges here, you know, use the points to break little edges, add bit more interest to the edge of that mountain so it's not quite so much we can uh, you know quite so sharp we can drag a bit of that but remember this side is light this side is cool here okay so we'll come back in through that let's add that nice light that appears right up here on the edge of this snow there's a light right there on that part of the mountain and again, I just used that other mount, I, mean, I used the photo for ideas about placements of certain things. I don't try to copy it. I just want to get some, you know, use it for some ideas about where to put stuff. Like I like this little light spot right over here. And that'll be kind of nice. Let's just put a little bit of a light spot of that snow back up over there. Okay. Maybe a bit of that dragging this way through there like that okay and we can lighten up take this and lighten up our violet side maybe up towards an eight. Oh, that's pretty good and maybe up towards the eight or so here but we don't want to go really any lighter than that use the edge of your brush here and add bring some of those snow colors kind of together, little touches. An artist, you know, a good other payment artist just does touches and marks here. Touch those around like that. And, uh, you know, just kind of adding, you're thinking of a, a highlight to a shadow basically here, a little light color to break up some of that other tone. Just little bits of it there, just tap it through here. Okay, but most of your stroke is to that angle that way, okay? Now, what I like about that one there is the crossing of the shadow and the light. So I'm gonna go back and many times I don't, I always remix the tone and mix it again. 
so that the color's a little bit different. And this is what really separates, you know, the really wonderful art is we t we're constantly, we're tone mixers. I constantly mix a tone so that it's constantly changing. A tone means the value, intensity, color, hue, you know, the, all of the stuff, the properties of the color together. That's what we call tone. So I, I don't want to use the same color over and over and over again. It gets flat. So maybe it's a little bit more blue here. And I'm going to touch a little bit of that right in there. See? A little bit more blue right in there. And let's just drag one a little bit further right there like that. Back and forth between the two. So now I've got a different, see that other tone? You can see it's different. And it's adding more, uh, uh, just one more little bit of interest to this particular part of the painting here. So it's just adding that in there, see? Just like that. And that works, you know, and so we try to add some of these colors in here like that and push that back through. So I made it a little more blue and I'll use it slightly different areas and touch a few areas of that, break up some of this other, you can even break up some of this other light by adding a few other marks and it looks like more going on into the mountain there, see? And, and this is the other thing too as an artist. As an artist, it will always look wrong to you, you know, and that's something that I have, you know, you have this impression in your mind and sometimes you put this stroke down or this color, we call a color mark down onto the canvas and it doesn't come out exactly like your mind saw it. And I let that go. Don't go in there and fuss with it because you'll just make the mountain all one color. Just learn to say, okay, that one didn't, it's close, but it's not exactly what I had in the vision in my mind, but it's close enough. It looks okay and go on because if you fuss with it you're going to uh, you're going to make your mountain all one color does that make sense so just go on learn to let things go other people will be seeing it for the very first time they won't know the difference they don't know what you were thinking when you painted and what happened they don't know the difference they only know what they see now and it looks like you know a mountainous color okay so you know, don't go in there and trying to fix a whole bunch of stuff. You don't, it does, it's not necessary. Okay, it's not necessary. Now, let's use the corner of our brush. Let's go back to our warmth. And look, and I'll start to look at other little things. Like there's a nice little light warmth. Let's see if we can get it. Now, sometimes if I, if I can't, I support my hand with the long brush with the, with the board. Okay, just take a stick. It's called a mall stick. And you just support your hand slightly and let's just push in a little bit of that light right there, that lighter color that you can kind of just barely see a little bit of that. Maybe a bit more light, a bit more texture, smaller little touch of that right in there like that. See, I like that kind of stuff. It hits the light side of the mountain. We've got some nice dark there with it. You'll notice, you know, other little places of it you can hit just a bit of it here and there and drag that around and it just gives a, a bit more detail. You're actually looking at a little bit more detail to the mountain. You can also, you know, if you find that hard or if you, you know, if you're a beginner and you find that hard, you can go down to a smaller brush. Let me go down to a little smaller, let me use this really old raggy number four here. And, um, and this is one. Might as well teach you this. This is one I left I left paint in for the last time, so it's a. Uh, and this is uh, if you haven't seen me do this before. This is hand sanitizer, really popular today. This is regular hand sanitizer. If you have one that hand sanitizer that is like uh, 60, 70 percent of the uh, the uh, alcohol, it just takes off away the color right away. So this is just cleaning the color. You can see it cleaning the color, even though this is old dried on here for several weeks. Alcohol breaks the binder of this particular paint and so you can clean your brush all the way back to new again So it takes it right back to its fine point and makes it all new again Right with that you can even use that if you uh, squirt that out here put it and run it You can uh, clean up all your your handles and get them back to black and stuff again here, too so it's, you know, many times I forget, many times I do, many times I forget to clean my brushes properly. But I don't worry about it because I can clean my brushes, uh, you know, 
out wonderfully just by using the hand sanitizer. As long as it's 60 or 70 percent, 60 percent is enough of the alcohol, it'll be fine. So I'll take this little number four now. We'll push that right in here to our light here. And we'll come back into here a little bit more light. See, with the back of the mountain here, I can go as light as I want. It's the darks that create the contrast. So I'll add just a touch more here of just some lights and movements to break up that mountain to add a little more interest. But what I really like is kind of this plain stroke right through here. So I'm going to kind of emulate that, drop it down, and then pull it across right like that. I like that kind of look into that mountain there pulling that across. It gives a different feel to that mountain there. And I like that. And then right here, you can kind of look and see a, a little mark pulling down. And so the angle at which you stroke, so you start to read the little angles and stuff that you stroke. And that gives you a good indication. Let's put a little light right there. Maybe break that just a bit here. So you can see it's really kind of fun to break the mountain apart like this. Start big, then start working smaller, you know, to, and a lot of shadow angles, a lot of light angles going, you know, going different directions here. And uh, get your light, make sure you put a little bit of warm yellow in there. Vary the tone a bit here. And you let what happens, happens. You're never going to be able to copy exactly what I do. And I can't copy exactly what I do again as well. So, you know, and that's a bit of texture right there. You can see it stand up. And the question is, do you leave it or not? Or just take it off a bit? You know, that's going to be part of your technique, what you decide to do. But I'm just going to put a bit of that in there like that. Okay. And... Then we'll pull across here like this a bit. Put a bit of that in there. Let that come across, maybe there. Just little touches of it. So I'm picking up just a little bit of that edge, that feeling there. Now, overall, you see this mountain is, is working right now, but it's not as dark, it's not as blue as the photo. But I can't have it that way. So where's my mountain? My mountain is really kind of right between these two. Do you see here? Now, do I want it more blue? Do I want it more violet? I can certainly do that here and add some other, you know, darker, you know, violety types of colors here. Let's go back up over. Let's go right in here. See this? See where I was adding the extender from the sky? See how everything here is still wet? Over here where I use the water, you can see it's completely dry here. But over here, everything is wet. That's what extender does. Extender keeps it wet. But many times as an acrylic artist, I don't want it to stay wet. I want it to dry. I actually love painting a mountain when it's dry and just painting the tones of that mountain. Because you don't need to blend. You don't see me blending something here. I'm taking a stroke and applying it there, you know. Let's uh, lighten this up. We'll leave it a bit more violety blue here. Maybe gray that just a bit. If I want to purely gray it, I use naphtha red light. If I want to just kind of warm it, change it a bit, I use the uh, burnt sienna here. And uh, let's get just a touch here, a bit grayer, right in here. Now that's really, really dark here. That's a really dark color. I'm going to add just a touch of extender here because I'm in a wet area. I'm going to keep it wet here. And let's lighten this up. We said a 5 to a 6, somewhere right around in there. Always check it on your value scale. So I'm right about a 4. Now there's a way you can do it. You could thin it out as well. But I'm just going to lighten it up just a bit more. Let's take some of this blue, not as dark as that. We're not going for that dark, but what I'm going for is a little bit more of a blue, a little bit more bluish tone, somewhere right about in there is what I'm looking at. And that's just my choice, just to break up this the shadow side of this mountain with just a touch more of the blue coming from the sky here. 
like that and just push that in there. See, it just gives me a little more color, that color. Now, I don't want to carry it everywhere. I don't want to break up everything I've already done. Let's just add a bit of that into a few areas here. A few areas here. This one has a harsher edge to it, but I don't, you know, and, and that's the thing. It's like you see a harsher ridge line edge right there. I'm not going to do that because it's so far away from my center of interest. Um, I can go back and add it later if I decide I want might want to do it. But I'll leave it a little soft for right now because I haven't painted my um, house yet. And when, so I leave everything kind of soft, a little bit blurry until I paint my house. So you can see that, and then the house will dictate what I can do with some of the other stuff. Now let's just thin that out, lighten it up, thin that out, and drag a bit of that through some of this, this area right up here as we decide on what we're going to paint into the mid-ground there. So we'll see that. Now I put a, a raise this up. I kind of like that. That one's a little bit more of a softer angle you can do that just lighten up the sky color here and add a little less there and soften those points so that it's a little softer that's up to you that's how you change your mountain you can see i just changed the mountain the whole feeling of the mountain there okay all right let's uh go back so that's basically starting the the mountain there and you can see that it's it's value painting Warm, cool, lights, darks, you know, light, dark more than anything else. And I can control this. I'm going to go back to my half inch here. A little bit of this color here. Maybe uh, let's take some beige with that. A, different, a little bit different tone. And let's just drag some of that. Let's go a little bit more beige. And that's going to be around a five here. We'll add a little water. I do like painting with water so it dries up pretty much. And we'll, yeah, that's a good tone. Just drag some of that through. A little darker here. We're going to break up some of this, more of this color, and we're going to allow it to go a little bit darker as we come forward. Let's get rid of some of this here. Okay. We're going to make the foothills here of the mountains, basically. Here. Bring that right up into here. Okay, start bringing the mountain forward. A little more beige, blues. As we come farther forward, we could actually get a little darker. As you come forward, a little bit darker because we don't need to be quite as atmospheric. Does that make sense? Let's just grab some of this, just push it right up in through here. Slight angle. You can read different, slight different angles of the the foothills there as we're going to put those in okay and you know if you don't like your foothills you just <laughs> you just build taller trees that's what you do you just cover them up with taller trees if you don't like your foothills here but i try to keep them really as as impressionistic as possible here blur out some of that color you get a little darker that brings it a little farther forward you blur it out a bit here and uh, that really does help quite a bit now there's going to be a line of trees so we might want to have a bit more of a let's take some beige maybe a little bit of burnt sienna right into some of that blue here might want to have a, a bit of like a that shadow that shows up here like that onto it we might want to build that a bit more for this foothill right here right there right like that you can see a bit more dark is coming forward. So let's go just a touch more dark, just a touch darker here. And so as we, you know, we, we set up here no darker than a five or a six. Now we can get down towards our fours. So there's a good four, almost a three here. And we can push some of that in, but we don't want to go there. This is controlling. We want to be somewhere between our mountain and there. And then you're making the foothills. Does that make sense? So you want to be somewhere between your your mountain. So it's slowly going to come darker as it comes up this way here. 
So that pushes up that one there. There's a big old shadow from all the trees and stuff. And we might just add this area of shadow right up in here. I do like that coming from that edge of a hill. But again, remember, you're blending two photos together here, so we have to change that. But the big thing is, where's the biggest amount of your contrast? Right there. That's where we want it. That's where we want to keep it. So we've put some distance into our mountain. Let's go in and, and redefine some of our burnt siennas and greens and a little bit of blues. Yeah, we put them in again. Sometimes I'll cool it with a little violet so the tone is a bit different here. Let's add just a bit more of that dark right around here. You can even take your brush up and down like this to start separate, you know, sometimes I'll do this to start simulating some of the verticals of trees and stuff that are gonna be there in that area here, which is not bad, but we don't wanna to paint total verticals all the time. But we'll just kinda of simulate that a little bit there. But let's get that nice dark, some of those violets and blues, some of that real nice dark that's gonna contrast against our house and stuff here, right up in there. Okay, so that darkness is gonna pull us right into there, right into that area there, okay? And uh, that will work. And it'll help us, it gives us our area right in here, kind of where we were planning our area right in there for our house. Now, let's, uh, let's take some of these other greener tones, greens right into here, a little bit more pine green, some of these darks. Let's establish, let's establish an area for our house. Our house will be right there. So we'll drop down here like this and we'll push in first a nice dark of that little green band. We don't wanna paint it specific perfect, but we'll drop that green band. Now, if we wanna draw in, we make a nice, nice thick stroke right in through there. And then we drag our brush out onto the side so that color starts to fade away and so it doesn't have very much power. So the majority of the power of the color is right in there. That's what you use. And you're gonna learn that when you put in a color opaque and thick and lots of texture that draws that color, that draws that viewer right to that color. When you break the edge, and this is, this is a broken edge of color here, that viewer loses it a little bit, okay? And can't find the detail of it. Now let's come in and Let's get some yellows in there, because I see some lighter yellows. Let's even get a little bit of that nice Hansa in there. Brighter yellow green. You can see the brighter yellow green right where our house will sit, right there. So I can go brighter than that. Let's put a little bit of that in there where our house is gonna sit. And I always kind of wipe my brush with a paper towel sometimes when it gets too thick. And no, you're not wasting paint here. Let's drop it right over here, add a bit of white, get a little more contrasty color right in there. And I'm just gonna drag that right down there right now, for right now. And that's gonna give us a nice light and dark area here. That's gonna allow us to uh, a position there for the house. This is like the lawn. It looks like it needs to be mowed there of where that, that is gonna go. We'll take some of the greens Kind of just move, I move them through like this. This is very impressionistic. Just to tap them with your brush, drag and even push with my brush. So I don't always make just marks by pulling. I sometimes will push because it'll give you a different look to it right there, okay? And, and it's a great way to do that. Let's uh, model in some more yellows, different yellows and take a, a bit more color in there. This is where the house is gonna sit. So we want lots of different kinds of tones of green. See how I turn my brush to get different uh, colors and tones and stuff there? Yeah, don't use the brush too many times. Don't use it too many times with one stroke, repeating a stroke. Don't do that because you put in a pattern and that pattern will you actually, every time you touch that brush, you're not adding interest, you're taking it away because you're putting in a pattern. Does that make sense? So what I try to do and what a lot of artists try to do is we turn and rotate our brush to use it different ways. You can change brushes up, you know, and uh, 
a lot of different things to do. Now, so we put some of those colors in. Let's carry, let's thin it out a bit here and just transition carry a bit of those tones here up and down maybe into some of these trees. Don't, not too much because you'll cover up real fast. Okay, this is carry a few of those tones. We'll have a bigger tree over here. We'll have to push some of that in. Okay. And so that's going to be some of our, I mean, it's, it's just an idea of the trees. Up here at the top, let's take some of this dark, model it, which means when I say model, you take it and you tap it into there, but don't over mix it too much. And let's just add some of that vertically here, which will simulate some trees right in this area, right in there like that. Get rid of some of those light spots. Okay, we'll add more stuff in there, but that'll uh, get us there. Now you can see we have that big, huge mountain shadow there, and I'll probably put that in. Maybe not right now, but I'll probably put that in because I like how it's going to contrast the stuff here. So, but let's take a bit of those greens right out here, like the tips of trees. Rotate the use of the chisel, sometimes the corner of the brush here. And just kind of move it around a bit okay just like that okay that's pretty good that gives you a nice feeling of where those are gonna you know where those are gonna be there okay and we're starting to develop our our drawing in right now we're still coming right into here but watch what happens now I'm gonna take this yellow oxide again now and maybe even a touch of Hansa and some white and we're going to go up in value here. Here, it, that value is reading right around an 8. So if I come up with this pretty close to a brighter, brighter value 8, that's more of a 7. Could go a little lighter. And I'm going to come right across here with a little bit more of power of color and stroke here, like that. Break that edge just a touch here, like that. That may be a touch too high here but I'll, I'll take some of the color down let's later let's put a bit more of that so what you're doing see is I'm letting the light dark contrast come in here and that's what I want to do and I'm going to pull some of this across like this and I might even leave my edges out like that I love that in a in a nice casual impressionistic painting and this is what we call impressionism. We're not copying it in real life. We're making an impression of what we see here. So I'll put some of that in. Let's go a bit brighter. Some more Hansa. Some white. Bit of yellow oxide, bit of dark light. Model that all up so it's not perfect. Let's drop down just a touch more because I thought I was a bit high. And we'll put on a little bit more paint. A little bit. See, I turned my brush over. Pull that through here. Don't pull too long, but that gives a nice movement stroke there. See, tap your brush a little bit. That breaks some of that movement there. You don't want to work too long in a, in a horizontal or in a stroke. You'll lose interest. Tap it a bit there. Now you see I've got more color. Step back and take a look at that one there that's looking pretty good I'm drawing your eye into into there now I can draw that just a touch more by reinforcing that dark and what am I thinking right now I'm thinking light against dark values okay so if I push I just put on a light color if I put on that dark color maybe a little more burnt sienna into it so it's a bit different yeah it'll be different than the, than the photo but the photo is an idea I'm not copying it Maybe pull down just a bit. Makes it look like maybe little bushes and stuff like that out there in the front yard that the guy hasn't hasn't cut down yet. <laughs> kind of like my front lawn out there. <laughs> Put a little bit of that sienna right out in here. Boom. Break that up. See, you're doing the impressions of those colors there, see? And you're building that area there. Just like that. It's an impression of it. Okay, not perfect yet. We're just, you know, dropping some of that in. Now, we could thin this out. Let's just take some extender or even water. And you can mix extender and water together. Drop some of this all together here. 
thin it out. Remember, we got to carry tone, but I don't want it to be quite as as dark and heavy. I want to have just an idea of some of that tone appearing right up into the front, maybe in the front little bushes or something like that. Just a bit of those tones we did. I might even soften them with my paper towel. Give a few verticals so it looks like maybe that's some grasses and stuff like that without getting too carried away. Maybe a touch more burnt sienna. Touch more orangey kind of color. Burnt sienna into that. Let's thin that out with a little bit of water here. And just drop some of that right in here. Boom, 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 boom. Just the idea, tap it around a bit. Like you see in the tops of little wheat or you know bushes or something that's right up there. You don't know. And uh, let's drop just a few horizontals over here. That's gonna be the shadow from the tree we're gonna add there. Just like what you kind of see over there, but not quite as much. And uh, we'll drop that in, right in there like that. There we go. And you can blur this just by taking your paper towel right across like that. And see how it makes just a nice soft transition between the tones. Just like that. Don't do it too many times. You'll blend them. Just pull across. And that's what we call the blur. You blur those tones together like that. Okay. And uh, now if you want to fill up the canvas, you can just take a little bit of that and just kind of scrub over those edges over there like that. But now you can step back and look and we're drawing in a little bit more um, and I could draw in even a touch more and you because you think you have it dark there and it's looking like a, you know maybe getting close to a, a, a two but it's it's really more like a three so if I take a little more blue and some of the gray of the mountains and stuff that I have in there and we drop in a bit more of that color that tone it's a bit of that red in there some of the blue you can go more really super cool to a violet which we'll probably want to do but if I start adding some of those darks see how that really let's add another line of that little dark now let the dark diminish lighter pressure lighter pressure lighter just touch 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 just little bits of that so you're keeping that dark right up there in that focal area right where you want well, we're going to paint that nice little house right there. We'll keep some of that right in there, some of that tone there. And so you see it's a light, dark thing. It's kind of drawing you right up into that part of the painting. That's where we want. That's where we want to go here. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give that a quick little rinse. So this is my half-inch brush. And... So before I go in there and, and, you know, finish off and do trees and stuff, I'm going to start blocking in a little bit here for the house. So I'm going to make that roof that you see there is modeled with the blues and some of our burnt siennas. And it's about, you got to get close to the value there. So the value of it there is right about a five. So I want to create kind of a grade five, I'm a little dark and a little bit green. So a bit more burnt sienna. And you, it, sometimes you have to look and really kind of this, that's right at a five. And what I want to do is just put a little angled stroke here down. We want that house to come in here. So I'm going to look at that roof right there. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of an angled stroke there and look at this value. And most of the time, if not all the time, you have to adjust it a, a, you know, a few times to, to get that. Now, that roof is a little could go up at a little higher pitch here. Let's go up a little bit higher and tap and use different corners of the brush so that you know you don't get that roof completely solid right in one one side there. So we'll drop that in now. And then, and looking at that there it could you know you're going to want to put in more interest. And what I do is I'll tap in some of those colors, just model them around, maybe a little more blue, a little more sienna, and touch that into the roof as well. Sometimes pull across, sometimes pull down. So you get a little more color going on there into the into that house. 
Let's get some red. Let's drop right down here. Reds, reds, greens. And one reason why I use a lot of this. Now, you know, with the glass, which is really nice, if you get a tone and you want to clean it up, you just use any kind of little scraper like this. And you scrape like that, and you've cleaned up your palette quite a bit. So if I don't want that, that red to, uh, you know, to, uh, to mix too much with the green, you know, I'll, I'll push that out here, a clean area. But I do like the modeling of the tones like this. See how you get this modeling up? And that gives you a softness to it. Now, let's come in here. First, let's just set almost a horizontal here with some of that color. You can see some of that color there going in there in that house there. But then maybe take some of the darks, maybe even more of a violet here. And... Um, you can see that shadow of the roof line and everything. Just touch and pull down just a bit to get some of that shadow. So you see a bit of the red, which we're going to put in nice and bright onto the other side. But you see a bit of that red there because that's the shadow side. So you're going to have a shadow side and you're going to have a light side to that uh, particular one there. Okay. So um, let me now, let's come in a little closer here as we build this. We'll build this house up there and you'll see my wonderful uh, mountain there as well let's go come in just a bit here a bit closer and you know a lot of times um it's going to then when i'm coming in close with a camera like this you're going to see all my mistakes <laughs> but you're a lot of times um you've got to get back because you're painting impressionism so it may look like nothing up close like this but you get back and you look at it and uh, for a more natural feeling you're going to paint impressionism you're not going to paint it perfect okay let's come in and you can use a small brush i'm going to try i might go down just a little bit here to uh like my uh my i think that's probably an eight <laughs> a little bit smaller here and you use a bit extender or water doesn't make a difference let's come in and let's make this softer red a little white a little burnt sienna a little bit of red here and it is gonna be yeah boy that's just right about the color so it's gonna be right down around here five to a six and but don't over mix it even add a little green in there model that up see that tone here Okay, and you're going to want to do it, first we'll put it in more vertical. We'll come right along the edge of the roof line and pull down. Let it pick up some of those darks, because that adds the interest. See the interest in the tones that you have here? You don't want it to be too opaque. Let's add the other small side here. Now you can, you know, you're painting acrylic, so you can let this dry and go in and sketch something on there if you want. Or you can just build it like me here. So that sets in that side. Let's touch a little bit of that over here, just into the edge of the house, the barn house there, the edge of this house. There's gonna be a little barn into the back back there. So let's tone this, lighten it and tone just a touch here and give just an impression of it right back here. Maybe a little horizontal stroke, maybe a couple little vertical marks just to break it up, okay? Let's darken it down, take some of our violets, some of our reds. If any of this dries on you, because you've taken your time trying to make that perfect, I make it an impressionistic, but if you've taken too much time making it perfect and it's dried on you, you mix the tone again. That's what you do. And let's put in a longer side right here, slightly darker. Just pick up, see how it's just a, just a value or two darker here. You can see it. This is your little house here. A little little barn house there, just a bit of it there, see? Now let's take a bit of that tone and add it right in there. This is one of the things I learned to do. Carry that tone, touch it around, maybe up underneath the edge of the roof line here. A little bit of that tone. That's what's going to make it more. Now we got to bring out that uh, little barn house there. We've got to bring it out a bit more, a little lighter bit more color here let's bring this out just a bit more bit more bit more tone here let's bring in a bit more of a horizontal right in there like that ok 
Maybe that brings out that color a, a touch more. Maybe change the tone slightly lighter because there is a little detail in there. Lighter. There. In other words, there's you can pick up little lights and darks and you know the siding of the house. And we're impressionists; we don't want to do that, but we can do some of that with the movement. Ugh, push too hard, dug a hole right there, and well, not I removed the color. So you set your brush down really light and just drag it, just like that. Okay. So you get some of that nice modeling. That's a pretty good light color. Let's add just a touch of that back here. Just drag that right across there like that. That's too light, so I get to do it again. Maybe I'll, I'll soften it with a vertical so it's not quite as much there. So it's, in other words, I when you're painting, and this is one of the things put up in your studio, besides the drawing in and all the value, don't repeat a stroke too many times. Don't repeat a stroke too many times because that each each time that makes it a little bit stiffer, okay? A little bit stiffer. We don't want to do that. Okay? All right. Let's put in what's one of the things that's really going to help us is that light blue-gray. Let's just go right over here towards our reds and blues, our light blue-gray. And that is going to be up there right around an 8 or so. So nice light little roof with a light. This time the light's hitting this one back here. So we'll use it. And this is a great place to use your stick to help rest. Find the nice little angle with your brush here and just pull down at that angle and let a little bit of that draggy kind of modeling of the color come through in there. See, I'm going to pick up a bead of or a little extra texture by pushing on my brush like this. So it gives me a nice clean little edge. And edges are going to be nice or important right now for really getting that that dimension to the house. You don't want to round your roof or something. You want that edge. Now, so I'll put that edge in there like that. And, you know, it, it really does go very cleanly behind the house. So one of the things that I will do is drag right down into that little house there for a second, darken down, gray up, pull that, the roof of this one right back on top of it again, in front of it. And then that, that gives you that nice impression of it there. Okay. A little bit of that dark. You can just give an indication of the, the roof there onto the other side. Maybe that darker red over there. Hit that out. Now, what's really nice about all this, you can blur those edges out and stuff like that to give just the impression. Don't try to make anything... If you try to make anything too perfect, it becomes really stiff, really fast. Let's take just a touch. This is a touch of the grade red, and just drag it right into some of that roof. That just gives a bit more... We're on the shadow side of that roof, and it just gives a bit more interest to it. Blues. Blues and burnt siennas and reds, and I will tend to just tap little bits of these colors in here several times to get the, the look that I want to have here as I start to straighten up my, some of my lines. But see all that little modeling of color in there? That's what gives your, your painting so much life and uh, so much energy, so much life. That's what you want. Now we can take that lighter, almost an eight or nine little, gray, little line here. And I'm just going to use the chisel of my brush. Usually what I do when I do something like this is I just touch and lift off and touch and lift off so I don't make anything perfect. I don't want to create a line. I want to create just a, maybe the chisel here. Just touch, break the line just a touch there like that. Okay. Now that little red mark can go up fit up there a bit, but it's a little bit different red. I won't make, you know, I don't always use exactly the same red. Just kind of fill that in a bit there. And uh, you can use some of this clean up edges and stuff like that for this other one here. I do like to have somewhat cleaned edges. You know, there, little light, little light edges there. That's probably enough. How much and stuff you do, guys, though, is going to be all part of your technique all part of what you do as an artist, how you, you know, 
how you approach these little edges and stuff is going to be all part of your own, uh, you know, your own style, you know. And let's take a light yellow. There's little things that you can start doing, like little light yellows, kind of using the corner of your bigger brush, kind of tapping around in there, breaking up some of those areas, those edges, adding a bit more interest right in there, see? And uh, let's get some of that little burnt sienna, model some of that around here. And you know this is where I, I this is where I like the acrylics to drag on stuff that's dry. See, I get all this movement, and I drag on stuff that's dry, and I create. It starts to look impressionistically, like you know, little bushes and stuff. And you can negative paint. Negative paint means you take a color that's like the background, and negative paint means take some of that out that I just did. I'll take some of it out with some of the darker tone that I had there earlier. Here. And, uh, you know, you can uh, vary it and, and add little little touches like that. Now, as I'm coming forward here, it, you know, I can really start to control the visual focal area of my painting. Let's create our dark again. Blue, green, and burnt sienna, stuff. And as much as I bring in this line against that dark right there, that light against that dark and negative paint right up against that and bring that edge of that house that starts controlling how far forward that this little house comes in our painting here so it's the dark against the light and how much i do here how much of the dark against that little light there how much i leave it how much i'm going to take some of that edge out and that little back edge there out and uh, soften that. That all becomes part of, you know, what you want to do. You see some light that's right there. Just take the edge of your brush like this. Just hold your brush kind of flat and just drag it. And if you get too much, which usually happens when you're a younger artist, you get too much, you just tap into some of your dark and go back into it and take some of it out like that. Just take some of it out, see? And, yeah, then you can uh, continue on here. We'll take a little green. Let's change up with a little more lighter green and drag some of that through this part of the painting here. Maybe that's a bit more lawn he has to mow. Let's go even brighter yellow-green yet. White, Hansa. This is all contrast now. Don't mix it up too much. Model it up a bit. Maybe pull a bit of that this way. You can see I'm building some of those areas and slopes and stuff like that of the color here, like that. A bit of that going through here. Boom. Push that into, or what I call shear it off into some of the other colors. In other words, I push it off so it has no power. As I leave this, I'm just going to let this fade away over there. So I just push and drag the brush there like that. Let some of it fade away like that. Okay, now um, let's go, just to show you that, let's uh, step back just a bit more here. And you can see, now, you know, looking at it compared to like the photo, the contrast that I see in the photo, I like the reds that I have here. I could establish a little bit more of a you know a contrast or something like that to uh, this and you might you, you know you might it all depends on where you are and stuff in your your artistic uh, training and how good you are you could go to just a smaller brush take some of your red take some white maybe even a lighter orange you know I mean look at some of the colors here a lighter orange and express it. Now, how much do you mean? Do you put the little windows in and all that stuff? That's a lot of detail. But let's just tap a little bit of that orange around there. Lighter kind of reddish orange. Just a bit. And the more you do, the more you're going to bring out this little uh, house at that time. Now, don't do too much there, Dave. Just, uh, and but you can leave the impression that something happens there with the windows 
or you can take like a, that light gray or something like that and just capture the impression of it, of it. There's a window and, uh, you know, the windows down here will be light and, and you know, I put them in a, in a little light streak and then maybe a little touch of dark here. But a little light first and there for like to suggest the windows and then take a bit of your dark and just on the corner of your brush, just tap in just a bit. Just breaks it up. It just, you know, it gives the impression of it. That's what we want, right? And you can use grays and stuff here and hit like a, you know, the, the little light of a, of, a, of a, a chimney or something there. There's actually a little fence, uh, you know, porch post that comes down there. We can hit that little light edge there of that. Right there, if you want to get a little more detail in there, you can. You know, other little things, we can model some of our greens and stuff like that right up in here. And drop that in and break the edge. See how you break the edge there? And that gives it, look at making it look like little stuff going on. Little, um, you know, bushes and stuff like that. Boy, a little fence or a little pathway would be kind of nice, you know, right up there to the to the house. But um, it could, my house could come just a touch lighter. And this is the one thing that I, I, I really kind of approach slowly when I'm doing this stuff. It's like, you know, I'll put it on and look and put it on and look and add little touches of those lights and and stuff into it till I finally get it because acrylics dry darker so it's gonna you know it's going to to dry darker okay that's the big thing it's going to dry darker so you want to uh, look at it a couple of times here you know and uh, you know because I could I could take just a touch more light using this nice small brush here touch more light slightly different tone Slight but lighter here and drop in just a bit more, just hitting the edge of that uh, one there in the back. Now it's a cleaner line on the one in the back than I have here, but you know, if you make too many edges, you will learn that in all kinds of lessons coming up. If you make too many edges, you're going to bring an object forward. So we do want to be a, a bit careful there. Now, I destroyed the round. That's one of the habits I have is I'll round off the top or tip of the roof. I'm just going to take a little dark and paint out some of that so I clean up that edge of that roof there just a bit. There we go. So I'll see the edge just a touch cleaner. You know, and the big thing about, uh, you know, well, one of the things about uh, we'll make a nice kind of a ready, ruddy, darker color red put the shadow the roof line shadow right up underneath there that always adds a lot to the uh, to the houses and stuff there'll be one coming down this side here just like that you'll see that so that kind of puts it in there you know starts to starts to bring that little house in there and um Tap in some more lights here. A little, little bit more color, a little bit more light here. Gives you kind of a good idea there. And uh, yeah, now, and then you've got to look at, you know, how much more you're going to build up into the, the front up here. Now, also the other thing is I'm going to take my small brush like this. There's all kinds of ways to build trees and I'm going to show you thousands of different ways. Sometimes I do big brush. Sometimes I'll do a smaller brush like this and I'm going to put in some verticals and some horizontals just like this with some different tones. Just use the brush very flat and drag it through here like that and start to give the indications of some of the trees with some of my greens and yellows. You can even toss in some of your oranges and stuff to, to to gray and tone some of these colors. And you'll see some siennas and stuff like that coming in here. And so, you know, you can make all different kinds of trees. I'm just going to kind of emulate the, the movement of trees here and not paint them specifically here. Maybe a little burnt sienna. I love to 
constantly change those tones. Okay, so we constantly change these tones. Let them get softer and less as they get out here. So they just kind of fade away. You want, you want to draw the viewer in there to the little house, so we want to keep it softer. And a lot of artists will use just big brushes out through here. And, and I tend to do agree with that a lot. Get bigger, bigger brushes out here. And it, as you get out away from your center of interest, keep the small ones. Don't get too much detail. But that's, you know, everybody's different and that's all part of your technique that you want to, to, uh, to establish, you know, that you want to establish. Okay? We're all a little different here. So, you know, let's get some of that nice sienna colors in there as well of those trees care put it on and move it out right put it on and move it out here let's get some nice darker pine green burnt sienna a little blue a little gray here push some of those tones out like these are lines of bushes out here Paint the impression of it. Paint the impression of it here. I think, I mean, I can really draw that in. I think I compressed that front there just a touch too much, a little bit too dark. So I'm just going to lighter yellow green here. Push another stroke right in there. Tap that around. But that movement, see, that's the movement stroke. Tap it around a bit. And it just does so much for that little movement there. Here, let's just drag some of this out. Just kind of blend, not blend, but drag it over so those tones. So in other words, we can take a little extender. Let's just take a bit of that tone. Just let some of it come down here. There we go. Just let some of that come down. That's pulling you down. Now back up and through here. Just look at what a tree is. It's really just a line of light and dark. So let's just take some blue some burnt sienna and some green right up through here. Let's just put in a few verticals. The edge of your brush, just the edge of your brush. Push and smush it around a little bit. Put in some verticals there, okay? That's gonna help simulate the trees. And you can work in edges of just darks. You know, you'll see edges, sometimes just darks. You can put that rock in there, you can do that. Push that around like that, see? But so when you get back here, what happens is your trees aren't, there aren't very much. I mean, they're, they're not, you're not getting too wild and crazy with them here. I mean, you're just giving the impressions of vertical movements here, sometimes a little horizontal here. Give just the impression of them. Don't go in there and paint a whole bunch of perfect trees. Just the impressions here. Let's change the tone a bit, lighten it, maybe green it just a bit. Let's add a touch more over here, slightly different. Here we go, just like that. Give just the impressions of it here. And I do, you know, I was gonna push maybe that shadow back in there. Let me go back to my light, my bigger brush. Let's go blue and burnt sienna right down in here and see what happens when we push in some of that deeper shadow right in there. Let the trees come right back up. Try not to, you know, I in the photo, because I blended them too, you get, you know, some solid lines in there and I don't want to, I don't want to have too much of that. Uh, in other words, what I mean is this archy line is kind of solid. I, I want to blur these together so that, because a solid line will take away from the house. So, and we'll study more of that. We've got a lot of things, we got a lot of things to study. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Let's make a lighter gray kind of color and add some of that in there. Like that's the rocks and stuff going on up there rocks and little bits of the sides there of the hills and mountain a little different bit of it there let's add just a bit of it just an idea of it we'll just break it up most important parts of the painting are done so 
We're just going to break some of that up just a bit and just let it let it sit there broken like that. And that's okay. That's okay. Now, do we want to do this front tree over here? A little green, burnt sienna here. Sometimes adding a front little tree right over here. Just use the edge of your brush and just kind of sketch, push and pull like that. And just uh, dropping that down here. You know, you can just add that edge of that little tree there. It's not too bad. And I'll take some of it off with my paper towel so it's not complete and there. And uh, then you can re restate that shadow. Restate means to do it again. And many times you'll hear me say restate. But it got to be cool. So I'll put a little violet, a little yellows, a little burnt siennas, a little green. Model it all up. But a little violet so it's cool. Sometimes a little blue. Thin. Get it thin. Usually either extender or water. And uh, start right here. Pull and lift off. That sets that little ground shadow from this tree in there. Right there like that. Should have that in there. Now, that's a little dark, so I'm just going to drag through it here and let my towel lighten it up. But I like a bit of that movement in there like that. That's pretty good. And I like some of those colors and stuff that I have. And I like this tree comb. I'm just going to model this line across the edge of this field a bit more there so it divides that just a touch and I like that lighter see you can see like a lighter stroke right there let's see if we can capture that so we'll do that now I know that um, some of you are probably saying oh Dave you're going faster you're going faster you're going faster sorry <laughs> I do tend to do that a little bit this is where you might have to use me on pause, okay? But when I come to, this is a habit of mine, and I'll be honest with you, and when I come to the finish of a painting, I will focus down on little details and destroy all of the wonderful interest that I have if I don't move fast. And this is one reason why in so many of the lessons on the channel, I'm telling you speed, work fast, work fast, because if you start to slow down and concentrate on something too much, you'll make it too stiff. Okay, so if you find that happening, paint faster. That's how you get over it. And that's going to come with time. For you beginners, that's going to come with time. Uh, but embrace painting faster and take the challenges, like all the rose challenges and stuff, and see if you can do them faster because that's what's going to help you more than anything else. Let's come right back down in here. Start right in there and drag out. Now I'm dragging out because I want it to break as it's heading towards that tree. Does that make sense? And because I want the majority, so wherever you start the stroke is where the most, most of the interest is going to go. See? So I want that stroke right up in there, in that interesting area up in there. We'll grab that. Let me just pull this down. I like, I, I'm kind of catching a feeling, and this happens, catching a feeling of maybe I carry this down. That's too dull. A little bit more yellows and lights. Maybe I carry this down the front of the, the painting here to create that there we go that look of kind of carrying you in there. I like this yellow green so I'm going to take some of this green and some of this yellow nice little yellow green and maybe restate right along the edge here pull that I like that longer look there, pulling that out there like that. Here, in the shadow of the mountain, that's what I want to call this one. In the shadow of the mountain. And I'm just, see, these are just other little color marks and hits that, and they're the greens and yellows, and they just start to add more visual interest, especially right up in here into the, the mid area of my design here. I'm painting here. Let's get a little lighter green. Maybe we can pull out this way just a bit. Here. Climb a bit. But see that little mark? The longer bit of that mark um, that I put on that, that color passage there, that um, 
gives a nice movement here. Now we'll just take a bit of the dark here. Push that right down. Look, see how that edge, see how you can just push that right down. Just let the broken, not a perfect stroke, just let the broken color, the broken edges there, just kind of take over there. I like that. I think I'm going to uh, just close this up on this side with a little bit more right over here. Not quite as light or as bright, but just some nice movement here. Like it kind of, maybe there's a bit more ground right there. And then we'll put in some, we'll put in some darker uh, color here. Pull down just a bit. But it gives it move like undulating grasses, that kind of stuff, right in there like that, see? And you can break that all up. It's up to you. You know, you want to put maybe a bit of that look back there, like there's another little plane of it. Maybe there's more bushes and stuff here. See? That's all up to you. But what I, what I really want to do is draw your eye right into that nice reddish color there of that house. Now... If we, there's some things so you can sit there and go, okay, now, if you've got your red house, to, here's the thing, if you got your red house too bright, is that wrong? I mean, because I haven't carried that red through the composition. And there's some artists that will disagree with it. Some are going to say, wow, I love that. I love the contrast of that red. It drops me in there. That's up to you. If you want to carry it, you would touch some of that into some of your trees and stuff like that. Very easy to do. Just take some burnt sienna and some of your reds like right through here and touch that and see that does carry that color out see that that does work that's one thing that you're gonna you're gonna see some artists that uh, are gonna say you need to do that and you're gonna see some artists that say no you don't need to do that um, and there are, there's a thousand ways to do it okay there's a lot of this is one thing those of you that are beginners there's one thing there's you know, if you take a thousand artists and you put them in a room they're never gonna agree they may agree on a value, <laughs> on the number of a value, but they don't dis they don't always agree, you know, on, on stuff. So, you know, that's uh that's that's art. That's the beautiful thing about art. I'm just gonna lengthen this side just a touch more. Right in there like that. There we go. It blurs that line just a touch as well. And you know, that's up to you. How much more tapping? I mean and if you need to go to a small brush, you can. What I would suggest to you, though, is work as long as you can with as large a brush as you can, because that's going to help us as we go to other things and and portraits and stuff like that. That's going to help us, you know, with those uh, with those images and stuff. Now, so I liked and I like this just kind of disappearing down through here. And believe it or not, I can just lightly see some of my blue. But if you don't, then you should probably take a bit of that sky color. Right back up there again. Let's take just a bit of that violety sky color back up towards our eight or our nine or something like that. Right up here, real light here. And uh, whisper, whisper a bit of that. See, I love those little bits of blue into the painting. I like those little sparks of color. There, we'll touch a bit of that. See, that's a nice, beautiful, little cool color that sits up there. You can darken it and do all kinds of stuff to it, but here it's right about that sky. And I just think that that adds a lot uh, to the painting. And I usually generally do this towards the end of a painting. It's part of the things that, that I'm known for doing, you know, that I like to do. And, uh, you know, whether or not you do, that's up to you. That's your decision. I carry it through and do things and soften out and all that kind of stuff. But uh, carry some of it. And you can go, I don't want to get too carried away and make this painting all cool. Because you see it's cool in color here. But it does add a bit. And you can take out. Rather than, like I just added too much right there. But rather than play with it too much, I'll just take out with a little bit of yellow right on top. And that's when it starts to really get pretty and you get all these different, you know, tones and stuff happening up into there. So, yeah, there's a lot of different uh, ways to approach it, okay? That so has it. Now, you know, finally, do you want to take some of those colors, those light colors 
here. Add a little extender. I like extender sometimes, even though this is dry. This is all dry. But I like to add extender because it causes the colors to slide as opposed to water. Extender is slippery. Now you want to take some of those warmer, some of those colors there, and add those into your sky like little clouds here. Just scrub them in. Just scrub them in like that. And I use a little extender. Now you can do this wet, but see if my value is correct, it'll look just like little clouds here. And scrub that around there like that. And just like I showed you in that value video, you can paint the clouds just like I showed you in that value video, or you can just scrub a little color, scrub a little lighter color here. Let's scrub a little lighter color here and create like a, a little cloud, just very casual like that. And then I even use my dirty paper towel, so I might get some greens and stuff up into the sky, which I feel just carries color, makes it very artistic here, okay? And uh, maybe take some of that real light color and really drive that 9, 9, 9.35 right back here into that bottom corner with that little bit of grayer color like Hans used, that very gray. You can even pull up and down like he did, all kinds of ways, and create that little corner back over here. Blur that off a bit and create that little corner right back there. Okay. And if you feel your mountain is, you know, like there is that edge of that mountain up there that's not really allowing my house to come forward quite as much, I just drag just a touch of it over it just to break the edge there, just a bit. See how that starts to soften that back. It's up to you. It's a value. What am I doing? I'm lightening it with the sky. And uh, by lightening it there with the sky, it is making it recede just a touch more, you know? So it's the lighter color against the sky that's causing the receding of it. And watch your values. Make sure that real dark, 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 burnt sienna, blue, dark stays right down in there you know that's where you want that contrast of that against the house and stuff there so that works and and balance and work your colors and stuff but that'll give you a pretty good idea you know of setting what we call drawing in and I could we could develop a little bit more but I don't uh, want to do too much more of that you beginners will start to scream at me because uh, there's a lot I threw a lot at you but anyone this is my feeling about it okay it's like when I studied portraiture okay we never created a portraiture that we, we, we did studies light and dark studies like we did in the value lesson but we didn't go in there and say okay we're going to eliminate a couple of ears and a nose and make the portrait easier to paint no, you don't do that. You slow down, you start learning the concepts, and then you repeat those again, and you repeat those again, and you repeat those again. And then that practicing of those concepts is what teaches you to paint a portrait. But you don't make a beginner's portrait by eliminating elements, okay? So we want to, I wanted to paint, I wanted to paint some elements in here with you, draw you into the painting here. And I could probably, I'll let this, I could probably maybe have a little bit more on the house and I'll, I'll look at that. But I want to create these elements that forces you to learn quite a bit in each one of the videos. And like I say, I have that pause button and you work a little bit at a time. You could paint this painting here because it's acrylic. You can paint this painting over a week. Let's say you only got 20 minutes a night. Go work a little bit on it and evolve the painting, but learn the concepts of light and dark that we're doing here. Learn the concepts of some of those tones, modeling your brushes here, working that concept of that, that sky is that light. Try to set that in there and then get that nice, you know, house down in there in the shadow of the mountain. I want you to draw in, I want to draw in right to here, but I still want that interest in the mountain. And if you find that your mountain has too much interest, you're probably too dark. Does that make sense? Okay. So there's a lot to it. And when we create these paintings, I'm going to create a lot for you guys. And uh, we're going to be studying a lot of concepts and everything. And we'll do it with flowers, we'll do it with seascapes, we'll do it with portraits, we'll do it with animals, 
We got a lot of stuff to do, okay? But uh, so give this a try. Give this a try. Drawing in, and we'll paint some other ones when we don't. And and creating what we're going to be calling the visual journey within a painting, which is very important. Okay. Alrighty. Now, if you have questions, hit the hit the comments down there and ask me a question. And I'll try to get to it. Give me a day or two, because sometimes, you know, I'm I'm getting older. I fell down and uh, had to have a little quick had to have a little quick surgery on my elbow. So. <laughs> As I fell down right, tripped over my own darn feet. You know, here it is. I walk six miles a day and I tripped over my own feet in my house in the kitchen. <laughs> it happens. But anyway, uh, so sometimes I may be off for just a few days because of something I did. But uh, I'll try to get to those answers for you. Okay. And we'll have a great journey this all this summer and the fall of learning how to paint. Okay. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. Alrighty. And uh, don't forget to click like and share the videos. Help us promote our channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one.